<laughs> Warning the following program contains world premier certified ball players and credible interviews. Latest hottest content material may not be suitable for people with the following medical condition original phobia. <laughs> Acute player hater disorder. <laughs> no jumper. <laughs> no handles. <laughs> Allergic to playing defense. <laughs> if you suffer from any of these conditions, contact your coaching staff. Three minutes to go. Welcome to the Licensed Ball Show. This week on tap, we got that Hawks Naismith Classic over at Holy Anderson's. Be covering that. And as you see across the bottom of the screen right there, that's the games on deck for the whole day. At 12 o'clock, we got the Woodworth Academy of St. Francis Girls. St. Francis Girls got a real good basketball team. They really got a real good basketball team. They got Game Elite, President, General, the five-star general, daughter, play on that team, back off an of injury. So that's going to be another good one right there at 12. And then after that, we got St. Pius against Fayette County at 140. Some weird basketball times, but 140. Hopefully it be more on time than last week because last week we was two hours behind. Then after that, at 320 game, you got Westland and Holy Anderson girls. That's going to be a real good one. Got top ranked players on both sides of the, uh, on both sides right there. Then at five o'clock, we got Tucker Holy Anderson's boys, and got one of the best players in the country, Caleb Wilson. Going to be checking them out. Man, that dude right there is something special. Right? That's like the big ticket. I think I'll call him the big ticket. That dude going to be the big ticket, man. I think that's what I'm going to call him the big ticket. Then after that, you got McKeetran against Kale. They playing and facing off again. Kale always playing some 5A, five, five 6A basketball teams and be killing them. That's going to be a good game. Uh, it's torn between that being the game of the week. And so you got the grand finale at 820. Because this is the grand finale, don't mean we're going to pick that as the game of the week. We're just doing this because you got, you got Wheeler versus Newton. It's going to be the game of the week. You got four against three on Cal Sandy's rankings. These are not my rankings. These are Cal Sandy's rankings. You got three against four at the 820 game. That is the game of the week right there. Two teams both on one and oh right now. They're gonna finish it off right there. So that's gonna be a nice one right there. And I'm not I'm not sure what the score on this, but I got, I have Willer winning this game. I got Willer winning this game. They're going to edge this game out. They had a tough win last week against Dutchtown. They edged one out. Got, what is the guy named Joa? They got Joa in foul trouble, end up fouling out. And that was the difference in the ball game right there. They got them fouling out. But this is going to be the game of week right here. This is going to show me a lot about more about Newton. With a new coach and losing a McDonald's All American Olympian, uh, Stefan Castle. So that's going to tell me a lot about them playing a top ranked team like this. That's going to really tell me a whole, that's going to really tell me a whole lot about them. Most definitely. So we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and start off with rank number three team. Willow Wildcats chasing number 10. So they got an extra motivation this year from chasing number 10. These are the key players for tomorrow that I have right here. You got Josh Hill, 
Dakota, and you got Ricky. That's the keys right there. That's going to be the main players really going to be chipping in the most tomorrow for Willer. On Willer. So we're going to go with the, the key player for Willer. Key player for Willer is going to be John Chill, I think. He's going to be a matchup problem. They have really nobody in their team to match up against him. I guess they could go a little bit small and irritate him and dig up under him. But this guy, Josh Hill, he's going to be a problem. going to be locking up the paint. He's going to pose a big problem tomorrow at 6'11". You know, Arkansas State signee. Gonna be a pole. I think he's gonna lock down the paint. He's gonna help them with their rebounding a little bit more, and he's he gonna lock down the paint on both on both sides of the ball. He's gonna lock down the paint on both sides of the ball. So he's gonna be definitely a problem. I think he's a key to the game tomorrow. On that, I don't I don't see I don't see them having anybody to match up against him. I don't see they got anybody can match up against them at all. I, I just don't see it. I don't stroking the ball from the outside. All those things. And see right here, you see him dunking the basketball right here. On the break, he runs the floor real good. Now you see right here, shooting the three right here from the outside. This is a six eleven guy shooting the three from the outside. Right here, he's in the post, so he plays all three. He plays all three levels. He a jack of all trades, pretty much on the court, master of a none. Really, not a bad, not a bad thing at all. Not be a master one, but he's gonna be a matchup problem for them. I think he's gonna be the key to the game right there. On reason why Willa edged this out. As we doing this preview, I would try to come up with a score. I already will try to come up with a score on this one. But that guy going to pose a lot of problems for them. Then next up, we're going to talk about the engine. Ricky McKenzie. As of right now, he's the engine to this team. Ricky McKenzie is the engine to this team. Scoring like 17 points last week. I mean, he, he a bucket getter. Pose a lot of problems too, so that's another guy they really – I don't know if they really got a guy to guard him. He going to pose a problem for him. I think he really – he going to pose a problem for these guys. So, let me go on and play his stuff. I had the wrong button up, but we got it going, no, no doubt, no least. You can see right here how he stroked the ball from behind the arc. I mean, got a nice, smooth stroke, man. This dude got a nice, smooth stroke. Release it quick and deceiving. So it shot so soft and got a nice rainbow arch on it. And he will put it on the floor right here and drive to the basket and finish. And he plays so smooth. And he and seem like he just let the game come to him. He know his strengths and weaknesses on the game. Look at this 15-foot he pulled up when he took him off the three-point line. And back right here again at three. So he gonna pose. I mean, he, it's a matchup problem right here. I'm really, I mean, really, it's gonna be a really a matchup problem right here too. Once again, he's a senior. His team led by seniors. You know, Larry Thompson over there doing a great job chasing that ten. Over there. And then what we got next up is Coda, Junior. Sophomore. Play point guard. And we're just going to show he play hard-nosed defense. This kid plays hard-nosed defense. And the one thing I like about him, other than his hard-nosed defense, very much team player. Very much team player. And he passes the ball. So you got a lot of scores on this team. And you needed somebody willing to give the rock up, play hard defense due to all the other little things that the score is not doing. You really don't show it in the box sheet. The coach played him a lot last year and got him developing. And it really showing now, and he got bigger and stronger. It's really showing the fruits of the labor. Playing him last year is really showing the fruits of the labor. Man. 
working on producing this show and doing it at the same time. So you know, I gotta do everything. But let's go in and play his stuff. And this guy right, see how he's this is all passing plays too. This is showing how he's seeing the floor. You get there, gets you think he gets stuck, he kick out, and he find Ricky right there for the open three. Right here. He steals the ball, finds Josh Hill running the break right here, getting the bat, getting the fast break started. So you can see how this kid is really he plays in, you know, they they play good. And on their team, they got all their pieces who come in, they fit. Harry don't want you there if you don't fit. Coach Thompson won't players that fit. And I like that about that. You just don't take any player, you know, when they, when you have you perform on your team. He makes sure players that fit. And that's good. I, I like that. I really like that. Then we're going to go ahead and go into this Newton. Newton team. The Newton team has a lot of good players. But it's led by a two-headed monster right here. Jordan Green and Ted Neal. They kind of look the same. You glance real quick if you're not real familiar with their team. You think it's the same player until you really look and realize it is not the same player. It is not the same player. But both of these players, and I think this team is led by Jordan Green, the sophomore. That's why I really feel like he, the team is led by. What I have seen, you know, I could be proven wrong. I'm going to see him again tomorrow. And I like this guy. This guy got a chance to be very special, I think. Very special. Met the kid, did an interview on him. So you follow me and you watch the show on a regular basis. You want the licensed ball followers. Well, you know we did an interview on him. And this guy right here is going to be real special. Real long. He's going he's gonna to be a little bit of a matchup problem for Wheeler. I think Wheeler going to do a team effort on defense and neutralize him a little bit, but he's still going to get off. This kid, still, he's still going to he's still gonna get off. He's still going to do his thing, I really believe. Now, this guy right here, he shoots well from outside. Well from outside. Very long. Smooth. It's hard to believe this kid a sophomore. I looked up, that's what they had on him when I did my research. I was like, oh, he's a sophomore. He's long and play like, good like that. Play for Express in the summer. Express always getting some sneaky good players. You know, this kid's so smooth from outside too. Hitting long range shots. He gonna stretch the floor. Leave it open for people to kick like that. And then when you kick it out like that, you you pick your poison, man. You really pick your poison. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be some issues right there, man. It's gonna be some issues. Now we're gonna go into things. We're gonna go into Ted Neal. Ted Neal. Junior. This guy's a high flyer, play with a lot of energy. Also can play from outside and more of a leaper and get into that basket. Get, I can see poles are getting people in foul trouble, man. People in foul trouble. He could get a lot of people in foul trouble, man, doing that. And it's very explosive and everything. We're going to go in and play his highlights. forgot to be playing the highlight music just the highlight music i have not been playing but look at this guy this guy so long and lanky right here drive pass it to the cutting by guy cutting under the basket 
very emotional player, high energy player. Look at this, bam, alley hoop right here. That's all I want to say. If anything is fair use for educational purposes, we're using on the radar, all Twitter link. My boy Sean. We're using his stuff to show what he can do. But this guy is going to pose a problem, too. He's going to be more of a, mi a matchup nightmare than anything Ted Neal. I can see him get whoever's guarding him is going to be in foul trouble. I don't know if they're going to foul out, but they will be in foul trouble. Look at that guy. He, he had a made on. Look, he's so happy he, he made that pass. You know what I mean? That's what's up, man. That's what it's about. That's really what it's about. That's really what it's about. But this game gonna be a nice one. It's really gonna it's really gonna be a nice one. Yeah, this game gonna be really be a nice one right here, man. I don't think it's going to disappoint at all. I don't think it's going to disappoint at all. And I, I, One thing on my mind, I want to thank everybody who's watching and subscribing and retweeting and liking this show. I've been aware that y'all cannot post comments. One of the listeners have told me y'all can't post comments out. I found out why you can't. I didn't turn it off. I didn't. I found out why you can't post comments. I have it for kids' use. So for some strange reason, YouTube won't allow you to post a comment if it's only um, for kids. So I had to take all the videos off kid use, and y'all better comment on the video. So I apologize on that. And y'all can find this. Y'all can find this on all major platforms. Keep putting up the numbers. I I'm glad everybody watching and really doing this, and it's taking off well. Um, third season doing this, and more and more people starting to learn about the License of Ball podcast. Really appreciate y'all checking it out, liking it, and subscribing it, and sharing it on social media. I really appreciate that. So on the 820 game, I know on the 820 game, y'all want to hear what I got to say. I got Willa winning. I got Willa winning the game of the week. I got them winning it. But it's not going to be an easy one. It's going to go down to the wire. This game going to go down to free throw shots and rebounding, I really believe. Free throw shots and rebounding. I'm trying to come up with a score in my head. I was pretty close last time. I'm trying to come up with a score. Cause I think it's going to be a little bit low scoring game than the other one. This game a little bit. I don't know. I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be a little bit low-scoring game. So I'm going to have Wheeler 67, Newton 61. It's going to go down the wire on free throw shots and rebounding. And the difference maker in this game is going to be Josh Hill, how he controlled the paint. That's what I got. That's my predictions. On that. So now you're going to better comment and criticize me and tell me. I've been trying to block the comments because I ain't want no criticism. That ain't, what it, that ain't what it was. I ain't been blocking it for criticism. I just didn't know y'all couldn't make the comments. But I will release that as soon as I get a chance on one man, one man band town and do that. So you've been, thank you for checking out. The Naismith Classic over there, Holy Andersons. And we're doing the game of the week. You got five games over there. You can find it on social media. You can buy tickets on social media, too, as well. And we'll give a shout-out to Hawks and Naismith Classic. They do a great job, great hospitality for all the media people and coaches and players. They do a real good job. And you got SUV TV over there, and they have a big screen TV over there. Oh, it's going to be so lovely on there where they do replays and all that. So, at the beginning of the week, you know how we do. Monday night, we're going to have a recap of the Hawks Naismith Classic over there. Have a recap of this thing and break it down all games covered. Players week and all that stuff like we did last week. Till next time, 
Peace.